Good morning and welcome to day seven of our second annual WSOP Daily Spaces coverage. I'm Sherry Pliskota, a.k.a. Peaches, and our co-host today so far, because, you know, Brian will join us uh, on Brian's schedule, joke, joke, um, but stepping up and always helping out is Dark Angel Donna Morton, and today we welcome a special co-host, uh, Maureen Bloklinger, who is in Switzerland. So good morning, ladies. Pardon me. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Maureen. Hi, I'm ladies. School room, um, school room time. <laughs> 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 Love it. I just want to give a shout out to Elevator Results, who's been our sponsor for about a year now. If you need a tailor-made workout plan to help you lose weight or gain weight, Elevator Results can help design that plan. Follow them on Twitter or check out their website at elevatorresultspt.com. Please be reminded you can find our past recordings of our Spaces interviews and daily coverages on my YouTube channel at Sherry Pluscota 9212. Please give me a, a subscribe. We would appreciate that. I want to give a little um, shout out to Maureen who has um, graciously agreed to come chat with us for the next four mornings. And um, she's going to be a plethora of information all things in Europe, in Asia, as far as poker is concerned, and travel advice too. She believes in chasing those flags. In other words, winning or getting into or cashing in a tournament in a country you earn a flag. And she has, I don't even remember, I've lost count. Is it 24 maybe, Maureen? Hi, yeah, so unofficially about 24, officially 21. Okay, <laughs> great job. So yes, yeah, she's a flag wanker. She's a flag wanker. <laughs> so just some of you may remember that we did interview Maureen before, so I'm just going to give a little background to catch you up. Our guest was born in Pennsylvania, but she found the man of her dreams, Adrian, and since moved to Switzerland, his homeland. Maureen has dipped her toes into many facets of the poker industry. She is a co-founder of PLON, or PLON, the founder of two Facebook groups, Globetrotting Ladies and Globetrotting Poker. Our guest opened her own poker room in Davos, Switzerland. She's a poker tour guide, a dealer, and has a background in finance and does web design. Some of you may remember when Brian and I interviewed Maureen, she had turned eleven dollar an eleven dollar investment into a gold pass package to the F one series in Vegas last November. Maureen is good, like I said, going to join us for four mornings this week. So please bring your questions about various European and Asian poker rooms, casinos, rules, regs, etc. For she. If she hasn't been there, she surely is planning to get there to get that flag. I purposely left off the most recent calendar endeavor that you've taken on, Maureen. Can you tell us about your Revolving Ladies event calendar? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, thank you for the intro. Um, sometimes I forget what I do. So, yeah. Um, so since about 2016... Um, I've been tracking women's events, um, women's poker events around the globe. And just recently we went through a rebranding. So it's now called Women's Poker Calendar. So hopefully we get more traction because I do find that many casinos and partners um, host events for women, but sometimes they're not widely advertised. So I think we need to help get the word out that these events are happening, that the ladies can go and have a good time. I love that. And we appreciate you for your efforts because, like I said, it's a revolving calendar. So every day there's changes to it and you're committed to making sure that it's to the most updated information. So we thank you. Another question I have for you, and then we're going to get on to the WSOP coverage, is are you planning, aren't you planning a trip to Africa for poker? And are you doing a, a tour package or something about travel for them? Yes, exactly. So this November, um, it will be the Hendon Mob Championship 
the South African Millions, and that will be in Cape Town, South Africa. So if you're if you're looking to go, it's actually taking place over the American Thanksgiving time. So um, you can combine that vacation with a vacation to Cape Town and also play some poker. So if you are interested, you can send me a DM. The schedule is not out yet. Um, we just have the dates of the series, um, but we're planning to bring a group from the globetrotting community and do lots of off felt activities and touring. Awesome. Well, it sounds like a grand time. And um, if I if I had the time and the money in November, I certainly would do it. I'll be going on a cruise with a friend in September, and I have a feeling that's going to be my uh, big splash of the fall as far as big uh, vacations are concerned. But we will look forward to your updates and, of course, your um, vlog and your pictures of what you see and do in, in Africa. So looking forward to that. Um, let's get on with some things that are going on around town. Um, Donna, do you want to start with South Point? Yeah, let me just pull it up. All right. As she does that, I want to give a shout out to David uh, Peters and his gal Haley Hanna. Their son, Preston Jeffrey Peters, was born on June 2nd. And hats off to her. She went with no meds. And she said to be patient if you text her because, um, you know, she's trying to recover from all that. So shout out to the new Peter's family, so to speak, and their healthy new little baby boy. Whenever you're ready, Donna, let me know. I'm trying to bring it up. It's on my phone. <laughs> but every time I click it, oh, got it here. Uh, right. So point. Monday, daily tournaments. 10.05, no limit, limit hold them. 10k guaranteed, 205 is the 100 no limit turbo bounty, 3000 guarantee, 605, 100 no limit, 7500 guarantee, and my favourite of favourites, the what, 1005, 100 no limit turbo, 2000 guarantee. We've also got to say congratulations to Ken, who won uh, the seat to the Tournament of Champions. Also, Anthony and Walter. They booked their seats to the Tournament of Champions on the 11th. And after a chip chop, Aaron made a great score and qualified for the tournament also. So that's the, that's the qualifiers so far. So back over that's to you. That's awesome. Congrats to those uh, moving forward on to that tournament of champions south point's doing great stuff for their regular poker players and if you're in town long enough you can qualify when you're there for the wsop so they're doing some great stuff over there at south point so kudos to them um i'm going to go ahead and talk about the orleans today they have Today's the third, right? Yeah, my brain is a little tired. The Orleans has <laughs> yes, thank you. The third. <laughs> no limit monster stack, 30K guarantee, $300 buy-in at 11 a.m. And they also have a uh, 4 p.m. no limit 1K milestone bake builder, $120 buy-in at 6 p.m. They have a no limit super stack 20k guarantee $200 buy in. That's over at the Orleans today. Over at the Golden Nugget at 11 o'clock is their Omaha High Low eight or better stud eight $300, a $340 buy in or 25k guarantee. At one o'clock is their deep stack no limit 30k guarantee $200 buy in. At 1900 is their nightly no limit hold them 5k guarantee, $130 buy in. Over at the Aria is their 11 o'clock $800 PLO, eight or better, and it is a 150,000 guarantee, 30k starting stack. Over at the MGM poker room, um, the Moneymaker team, uh, Tour has teamed up with MGM this summer, and today they have a five, excuse me, a five hundred dollar no limit super stack flight C at ten a.m. 
40K starting stack, and that is a $250,000 guarantee. At 6 p.m. at the MGM is a $240 no limit double green chip bounty, 20K starting stack, 10K guarantee. Some fun stuff going on around town. I'm going to leave the other two venues, so if Brian shows up, he can cover them. Um, let's move on to the WSOP. I hope Brian's okay. I sent him a message. Uh, usually I hear from him if he's going to be late, so fingers crossed everything is okay, although he may be trying to plan how he's going to play the shootout and get to graduation at the same time. Maybe rent a helicopter. I don't know. But anyway, let's move on to the WSOP today. And I'm going to read um, the bracelet and non-bracelet events for today. So day seven at the WSOP bracelet schedule is as follows. 10 a.m. is the $1,500 no limit. Hold'em 6 max, 11 o'clock is the 1,000 no limit, Mystery Millions Day 2. At 1 p.m. is the 10K Omaha 8 or better day 3. At 1 p.m. is the $1,500 limit, Badoogie day 2. At 2 p.m. is the 10K Dealer's Choice of Championship day 1. The non-bracelet events today are as follows. 1 p.m. is that favorite 250 No Limit Deep Stack. 3 p.m. is the $250 Horse Deep Stack. 3 p.m. is the $240 Landmark for 2,000 in chips. 4 p.m. is the $400 No Limit Deep Stack Turbo. 7 p.m. is the $580 No Limit Eight-Handed Landmark. 8 p.m. is the $200 No Limit Turbo Deep Stack Turbo, and 10 p.m. is the $135 Limit, I'm sorry, Landmark for 1,000 in chips. So some great events going on at the WSOP today. Now I am starting to get worried about Brian. Uh, okay, so let's, um, yesterday I asked us, I'm going to hold off on covering what happened yesterday just because I know Brian enjoys doing that with me. So we're going to give him a little chance to get here. I do want to talk about, um, I hope people had a chance to watch Poppy's broadcast podcast last night. He had Alan Keating on and what a fun broadcast as always. And I found it interesting that Veronica was the moderator in the chat. And of course, she's always got a great sense of humor. So if you missed that, I highly recommend you go back and watch Joey Ingram's podcast from last night. It definitely was fun. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday I posed a question or asked you to make a list of five females that um, you think have a chance of winning a bracelet this year. And out of those five, I want you to give me your number one pick. So Maureen, I'm going to start with you. Okay, sorry for the delay. Um, I had okay. to get myself off mute. <laughs> okay, so I actually made a list of 12, just in case I went last, that I would have some options. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So we're going to make you narrow it down, and you give us your top five. And guess what? If those others aren't mentioned, then we'll go back to the others. How about that? Okay, cool. So um, I... As you mentioned, um, I am in tune with like the worldwide poker world. Um, so some of my um, picks, um, maybe this chat hasn't heard of. So I would say my number one pick at the moment, I'm going to slaughter her last name. So it's Diana Folkski. She's okay, just spell she, it. Uh, just um, spell it for us. V-O-L-C-O-V-S-C-H-I. She's currently number 59 on the um, women's GPI Player of the Year ranking. Um, she plays under the Portuguese flag. So um, I know Diana, and she's had some deep runs. She plays No Limit Hold'em and PLO for sure, and I think some other variants of poker. Um, last year, she actually got a second place finish in a WSOP PLO ring event, and I know she's an online crusher. So um, she's been playing. I have known her since like 
um, during those tea times. Um, and she is playing very well at the moment. So I'm going to put her um, on my list. I'm going to stop you for a minute and ask yeah. you if you know what kind of schedule she's planning for the WSOP. Is she um, have a lot of um, things planned to play? Is she going to only be there a short time? Yeah, that I'm not sure of. Um, but I would assume the PLO events and the main event for sure. Okay, cool. Go ahead, dear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then my other pick would be, um, she's from France, um, Rosalie Petit, P-E-T-I-T. Right. She's also in the top 50 at the moment for the Women's um, GPI Player of the Year. Um, she's a professional player. Um, she does play many of the variants. She has been in Las Vegas since the beginning. Um, so I've been following her Instagram updates. She's also a strong online player, um, has been having a good year. So she's my other pick. Awesome. That's Rosalie Petit from France. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Then um, one of my favorite players of all time, Anna Marquez. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. So um, as we know, she grinds with the, well, well she, she's an ACR pro. So she also played some of the Triton high roller this year. She had some finishes at EPT Monaco. She always um, plays strong. Um, and I think it just needs to be her time. So Anna Marquez under the right, Spanish I'm gonna, flag. I'm going to stop you there. And mm -hmm. I'm going to let um, Donna give her give three picks, and then we're going to go back around. I'm going to see if you're listening right now and you um, have some picks. I know ASG, you were given some shout outs yesterday. We'd love to have you come up and give your opinion or your choices. So anybody else, Todd or, or John, anybody, uh, you're more than welcome. Just give us a request in the bottom left corner. Donna, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to choose a friend of mine who's been a friend since Caitlin was two. She deserves a shout out. She's the one that got me into poker and got me into all this chuffy mess. <laughs> My friend, Rosari Murphy, or Rosari Roberts, she is an absolute crusher. She doesn't believe in herself. I wish she did. But she is due a big score this year, and hopefully when she goes to the WSOP, she will enter some WSOP events, and hopefully she will get that bracelet that she well deserves. Also, Delia, uh, Maureen, what's her second name? De Jong. She's another crusher. Yeah, the um, GG. Um, I think she was Team GG. She's Dutch, correct? Um, yeah, she's another uh, crusher. It's Matthias's uh, fiance. I don't know whether they've got married or not. Matthias Moldhausen's fiance, but she is a total crusher. I can see her going deep and maybe winning a bracelet. And also Laura Eisenberg as well. I can see Laura doing really, really good things this this WSOP. I think this year is going to be a year for ladies crushing. It's about time. And I want to wish all the ladies over there that's going heading over there, uh, enjoy yourself, have a good time, network, uh, and just do your best and go crush. Amen, sister. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Uh, of course, you know, last year when I started to uh, put out some names of those that I think should be inducted to the Hall of Fame, this person's name was on that list as one of the three, uh, JJ Lou. I'm happy to call her friend. She is such a crusher. She has st stood the test of time. Um, she's been on a bit of a roll. I think that um, she definitely can be one of the ones to win a bracelet this year. And I also went a little bit old school with Kathy Liebert. She's also a crusher that's been a around for a long time and makes lots of deep runs. As far as somebody that may, some may think is new onto the scene, although she isn't, but she's been making a splash recently, Victoria Lipschitz. I think that um, she's going to make a great run. And as a matter of fact, I have her as my number one pick 
to uh, win a bracelet this year. So Maureen, go ahead with your fourth and fifth pick. Um, sure. So um, the next one I have is Sheena Okamoto. So um, she plays under the Japan flag. She's a GG pro. And she's probably familiar with a lot of people because she was runner up last year for the WSOP Ladies Championship. Awesome. That's a great name. That's a great name. I love that. And who's your fifth and, pick? Um, I'm just looking at it. And then I also have um, Casey Mills. So as we she's, know, yeah. this year, um, she's been crushing. She won two rings kicking off in January in the same series. Um, then she she seems to be playing high buy-ins. So I think she's used to, you know, the the pressure, the performing, um, you know, final tabling, the ICM pressure, everything. So I think um, she she's going to surprise a lot of people. I would say that. Awesome. I, I agree. She's been crushing. I can't think of her nickname. Um, Mama. Poker Mama. Poker Mama. Thank you. A lot of people will know her by Poker Mama because um, social media seems to bill her by her Poker Mama name instead of Casey Mills, which, hey, both will work, right? So that is your fourth and fifth pick. And Donna, who are your fourth and fifth pick? Maria Ho, obviously. And I did have one, but it's just gone out of my head. Oh, my God. Um. You'll have to come back to me on that one. And if I decide to find it, if I, if I remember, that's, then I'll just play it out. That's okay. And I don't think anybody would disagree. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Lisa Renko Roberts. Wait, I say that again, Donna? Lisa Renko Roberts. I think she's due a... I think with Scott, I think she's due a win. She is... She works hard. She does really work hard, and I love the women's debates. She is due a win, and I hope that she manages to get a bracelet this year. And for those that may not know, uh, Lisa Remco Roberts used to be on Real Housewives, so some people know her from that, but she is a crush, crusher on the felt. Her and her husband travel together. They are a poker power couple. And they both crush it on the felt. So great pick, Donna. For me, my fourth place pick is going to be Kathy Chang, who is just a crusher in Limit Games. And we're going to have an interview with her tomorrow morning. Our show starts at 9, but she's going to come on with us around 9.30 and um, give us the lowdown. But she has been on a heater the last few months, and we'll go over that tomorrow. But I picked Kathy Chang to be the first woman this summer to win a bracelet in a limit game. So that's my pick for that. And I can't, you know, everybody knows or you've heard me say a million times probably before that um, I really like Kristen Fox. I just think she's an A1 class act in the world of poker. She is everything right in the world of poker as far as female players are concerned. And she is a damn crusher. So I also have faith she's going to win a bracelet this year. But for some reason, Victoria's name keeps, um, you know, it keeps shouting out to me that she's going to be the first one. So that's my top five. Uh, I'm going to invite John to go ahead and have a, a stab at it or comments or questions. Go ahead, John. Uh, you just took my, my pick. I was going to say Kristen Fox. And... Well, think <laughs> of somebody else that you think uh, well, has a good chance. Uh, I think Olga is going to come do good things after a game of gold and after all the drama earlier. I think she's going to come show people she's actually a good player and not just a pretty face. So I think Olga is going to do well too. Oh, that is a name we have uh, yet to mention, although she may be included in Maureen's 12. Um, yeah, she's a crusher as well. And, and you know, I really enjoyed watching her on Game of Gold. It was, uh, I enjoyed that whole thing. I, I can't wait for the ne next episodes. And I hope they, you know, keep it um, pretty close um, to what happened the last time. You know, I don't mind variations of, of changes, but um 
let's not ruin a good thing. And sometimes the second season, they try to go for too much, right? So, John, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. School's out. I'm cleaning up my office and doing some studying and listening to the podcast. Well, we the, appreciate you. space. We appreciate you and school's out for <laughs> summer. Well, that's Why right. That always come to mind, right? I love it. Absolutely. Right. I love it. I'm glad you joined us. ASG, do you have some questions or comments or your picks? Uh, well, a few of them have already been mentioned. So, uh, Let's see, oh, people who haven't mentioned, I'll go uh, Juan Lu. Oh, yeah, definitely. Crusher. Yeah. Uh, I'll go uh, Baby Shark. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's a great pick as well. How can you argue any of these names we've heard so far? Um, go ahead. Thanks, ASG. Worm, worm in my head. Baby shark, do, 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 do. baby shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> We're having a musical morning. <laughs> I love it. Um, go ahead. Um, uh, Lexi Gavin? Yes. Well, you know, we love Lexi. So th those were the three that uh, had not been mentioned that I had on my, uh, with. I also had Maria Ho and uh, and. Uh, Chrissy. Yes, you did mention, for the record, you did mention both of those ladies <laughs> yesterday, and the three ladies you m mentioned today are crushers, and you know what? It's going to be hard to, uh, for, to uh, not hard, it'll be disappointing, right, for any of these not to win um, a bracelet, because they're so fabulous. Did anybody, yeah, I don't know. Did, did anybody else pick up... Um... Oh, I forget her name now. The book, Gavin's book this summer. She released a book about tournament play this summer. I picked it up on Amazon. I got started on it, but I haven't quite finished it yet. Just curious I if have, anybody else got it. I have not gotten it yet, but I'm actually thinking about getting it. Uh, when I gave away the Jeff Lissandro book, I actually was trying to give away Lexi's book, but it had not been um, put on the market yet. And so then I went with Jeff's book. So I'm still thinking about maybe in the next couple of weeks do a Lexi Gavin book giveaway. And of course, whenever I do something like that, I order one for myself as well. So uh, I, let us know what you think. Sure. Like the one thing I can say about me is like I absolutely devour poker books. That's my favorite format for like poker study uh, besides like watching some videos and stuff. But like her book's really good so far. I'm about halfway through it. I can't just do one book all the way through. I kind of bounce back and forth. But yeah, so far so good. I like it. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, I do the same thing. I think I'm reading three poker books at once right now. And I haven't touched any of the three probably in six months to a year just because I'm wrapped up in real life right now. And, and uh, that has been put on hold. But I get it. I get it that. And sometimes it's just you read about something and then you want to put it to the test. And so you just stop and put it to the test. So um, I understand where you're coming from with that for sure. Um, Hope, I see your request. Um, I am not going to approve you as a speaker because we are talking about poker this morning. Um, if you want to send me something that tells me that you're in the poker world, um, just put it in the live chat and we'll be happy to entertain it. All right. Maureen, why don't you finish up with your list of 12? Did we hit any more uh, of them? Yeah. So someone mentioned Baby Shark. She was on my list. Um, I have Jessica Fearling. Um, oh, yeah. You know, she's been she, a, she just had a big win. Correct. The main event at um, the Commerce WSOP. Um, then I also have Katie Lindsay. Yes. She was yeah. my sixth bit. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have Esther Ite Taylor. Um, but I saw a tweet, so I don't know how much she's playing this summer. Yeah. I wonder or if myself. she's self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I have another wild card that probably no one knows of. Um, she's sitting number 17 on the 2024 um, player of the year list for women. It's Huawei Lin from Taiwan. Um, and she has a strong background. The Taiwanese players are strong. They study together, they play together, they take match poker seriously. Um, and she's new to the game, but also crushing that 
the GPI ranking. And my final one also, well, from Asia, but this time from Malaysia, Natalie Tay. That's not a name I know. Tell us a little bit about her. Um, so she also plays a lot in Asia. Pretty sure she goes to the WSOP every year. Um, I see here also at, you know, the EPT stops. She's an online player as well and also quite young. So if not this year, then I'm sure in a couple of years, we'll see her with a bracelet. Awesome. Great updates. I love, um, as I knew you would, you went around the world with your picks. And that's a great way to introduce some women to maybe some of us that don't know them and get their name out there and recognize how great they're doing in the world of poker. I hear baby crying. I'm going to have to, um, Maureen, can you fill the space for a minute? And Donna, I know she's driving. I just need yeah, to sure. I need to send a text. Go ahead. Sure, no worries. Um, yeah, so I tried to pick my picks um, from around the world. I'm happy to hear from others in the space who haven't mentioned a pick. Maybe you can write it on Twitter, um, some other picks. Um, fun fact, I was doing some research with um, another woman about the most bracelets ever won during a WSOP by females. And that record is currently sitting at four women. So possibly we can also beat that record this year. Um, there's a hundred live bracelet events and then also the online bracelet events. So I think there's a lot of events that the women can play and hopefully win a bracelet. Yeah, as I said, it's definitely a year for women this year. I've got a good feeling in my bones about it. It's just men have got to stop being souls to us all and realise that it is a level playing field. We don't belong in the kitchen anymore. That's gone. So just buckle up, buttercup and suck it up. If you get beaten by a bad beat by a woman, don't turn around and say, oh, you shouldn't have played that hand like that. They play how the hell they want. They've played, they've, they've bought the money, they've paid to play, they can play anywhere they want. Not everybody else, not everybody's going to play GTO. And that's what a lot of people and all these pros don't realise. Not everybody will play GTO poker because there's a lot of recreationals that's going to be coming to WSOP for the first time and they don't know anything about GTO poker. They come in for the experience, they come in to experience the buzz about WSOP, etc, etc. So just be kind and also be kind to dealers. Please be kind to dealers. It takes a lot of dealers to organise and there's going to be a lot of dealers that's not going to know all of the games that you play. So please be aware and please be kind. If you get a dealer that can't deal the game that you're, de that you're wanting, then ask the floor and say, excuse me, but this dealer can't do it or help them. Easy. Great ask advice. the dealer that can. Great don't advice. Plaster it all up, don't plaster it all over Twitter. Just go to the card room manager and say, look, this dealer can't do this. Could we get a dealer that's more experienced? Thank you very much. And that's it. End of, end of subject. Right. You don't have to embarrass the dealer, belittle the dealer, or make them want to quit. The whole, you know, we complain that, you know, dealers don't know their jobs, but yet... We don't help them to get better. If we want good, solid dealers, we ha have to help them. Remember, we too were new once in the field, and uh, people helped us along the way. Be kind. And unfortunately, I've had to retweet two or three times in the last seven days. We're into day seven of the WSOP, and I think I've already re uh, retweeted three times on this subject that players are calling out folks for not really treating new dealers correctly. And honestly, that is shameful. Like, there's no excuse whatsoever. So we're going to get off the soapbox, and I'm just going to tell y'all, I have heard nothing from Brian. Um, 
So I'm hoping that all is okay with him and we can um, hear from him soon. Uh, let's move on to event number five, which was the mystery or is the mystery millions. The prize pool is $16 million, a little over $16 million. The entries by flights. This is like so many entries. Flight A had 2,247 entries. Flight B had 3,272. Flight C had 5,290. Flight D had 7,609. For a total of 18,409 entries. And 950 of those are moving on to day two, which starts at 11 o'clock today. Uh, Andreo. Puccio, Puccio, I'm sorry, it's P-U-C-C-I-O of the United States, has 3.3 million. Jesse Rockowitz of the U.S. has 2.6 million. So they're going into day two, which is today, uh, with nice chip stacks. Some notables making day two, Katie Koo, Hamid Izzad, excuse me, Izzad, Izzad, no, is it is it's I I Z A D I, and it's so funny. I just go brain dead when I have to pronounce names, and I know this gentleman, and I know how to pronounce his name, but I just get tight. Anyway, good luck to Hamid. He's from Georgia. Uh, also, Nick Schumann still in the f field, and our very own spaces. Ruben Costa has two point one million and is still in that field. So good luck to all of them. There is a first place prize of 606,000 in that tournament. Second is a little over 404,000. Um, did I, I'm sorry, did I read? I'm gonna look something up. Anybody got any comments for that tournament? Just a comment that no, it's not. I saw um, Chad Holloway, he just posted a new poll um, in the Mystery Millions. How would you like the bounties divided? So I think this year it's two times one million. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. And then the his poll is saying, okay, um, is that um, what you would choose going forward or would you like a different variation? And one of the variations that he put up on the poll was one times one million and ten times a hundred thousand, which is the answer I picked. Um, because I think for a lot of people, a hundred K is also a pretty obscene amount of money. Yep. yep. Life changing. Yeah. And guess what? You're spreading the wealth, right? So um, yeah, it's nice to make one person a millionaire, but guess what? Now you're making ten people happy too. So uh, I like that idea. All right, moving on to event number eight, the 5K pot limit Omaha. It was a 5K buy-in. Prize pool is 3.3 million. There are 733 entries, 130 remaining. Bryce Yockey of the U.S. has, I'm sorry, you guys, this baby crying has got me all jazzed up right now. Um, that tournament found a winner yesterday. Bryce Yockey of the U.S. walked away the winner for 606000 Fer Fared Jettin of Columbia took second for 404000 Zachary Schultz of the United States took third for 283000 So kudos to all those winners. Any comments on that tournament? All right, moving on to event number nine, the $1,500 Limit Hold'em Eight-Handed Tournament. There was a winner, and his name is Nick, and I'm going to spell it, G-A-U-G-E-N-T-I of the United States, takes 121000 home. Joseph Brodsky, who had went into yesterday as the chip leader, took second for 80717 George Chin of the U.S. took home 54708 for his third place finish. Any comments on event nine? 
Moving on to event 10, day three starts today at 1 p.m. 26 um, folks are moving on to day three. Sam Saeed Eldin, Eldin of the United States leads the way with 1.3 million in chips. Jared Blesnick of the United States is close behind in 1.2 million. A familiar name, Scott Seaver, who I believe was the chip leader going into yesterday, um, is right over a, a million in chips. And there is a lot of poker to be had. A notable still in it, Sean Deeb, another Spaces friend, is in seventh place with 610,000 um, in, 610, in chips. First place in that tournament is going to take home 426,000. Second place, 284,000. Third place, 197,000. And that's going to be a great final table to watch. So that's what's going on uh, with the results from yesterday. Any questions, comments? Oh, well, let's talk about event number 11, the Badoogie 1500. Day two starts at 11 p.m. Uh, yeah, 11 a.m. this morning. And we have uh, uh, 487 entries, 139 are moving on to day two. The prize pool is 650000 $145. Joseph Wagner of the United States leads the way in chip stacks with 286,000. Oscar Johansson of Sweden is close behind with 218,000 in chips. Mark Rollins in third place from the U.S. In, with 217,000 in chips. So good luck to them. Some notables in that tournament would be Heather Elkhorn, who is the a former WSOP Dealer of the Year, and she actually owns and operates a dealer school in, I think it's the state of Missouri or Arkansas, forgive me, I don't remember which state it's in, um, but her name is Heather a. Elkhorn, A-L-C-O-R. Another notable still in the field is someone we interviewed a few weeks ago that I met playing the Savage Average here in Washington State. Great guy, uh, Craig Chait, is still in it to win it, and so is Rebecca Bogg. So that is event number 11. Any comments on that tournament, ladies or gentlemen? Hearing no comments, we are going to move right along Maureen, I know you were looking up stuff to bring up today. Do you have anything else? Um, yeah, so the big hot topic on X is um, the use of cell phones at the table. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> it so, sure is. <laughs> so I don't know where we want to go with this. Is Maureen speaking? Hold on. Yes, Donna, you'll have to go out and come back in, Donna. All right, look. That sometimes happens when people go in their car. They go in and out of Wi-Fi, so they have to go back out and come in for a better connection. Oh, uh, go okay. ahead. Yeah, no worries. Um, so what do you think? So what do you think's the solution to the uh, cell phone issue? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I started researching this, trying to read rules, trying to read all the comments on Twitter. Then I actually sent you that screenshot, which made me really confused because I was on YouTube watching Poker Go and the final table of the 500 No Limit Hold'em. I believe that was event number three. There's a player with iPods in. So I honestly have no idea what's going on because I was always under the assumption that if you're on the TV table, like no electronics whatsoever, like no cell phone, no iPods, no music, no headphones, blah, blah, blah. Um, so honestly, um, I don't know what's going on. For me, as a player, I just want to know, okay, what is the rule? And if we have this rule, I want to see it applied the same way every tournament at the WSOP. And Well, and around the world, right? Like that's the way to make it um, a natural a natural thing for people to be doing. We have to do it the same way across the board everywhere. Makes it easier for players to know what to do or not to do. 
you know, those rules have to be in place and enforced. And like I was making the point yesterday, we have rules, but they're not being enforced because if they were, we wouldn't be seeing pictures of cell phones sitting face up during a hand with a solver on it. So the rules are, that are in place are already not being implemented. And that's a problem too. So go ahead, John. Yeah, I'm hardcore on the, I would just like them to ban cell phones at the table, period. Um, if you can't go to a tournament and play without being on your phone, then you have other bigger addiction issues. And it's really, I mean, even if you take that away from it, is it from, a, from the enforcement side, it becomes a nightmare when you say, well, you can do this and you can't do that on your phone. Like there's no way dealers or floor or whoever can, can monitor that. So that it's really just, I think we, we, back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, there was a ban on phones at the table. Everybody was fine. And I mean, I think that just needs to be the new rule just ban them at the table well, you want to be on your phone get up walk away do what you need to do and come back and see i am hearing you loud and clear and i agree with it i agree that you know it's a plain and simple solution no more cell phones why because we went from no cell phones to oh we can do this only with cell phones and of course you always have people trying to push the envelope trying to get around skirt around the rules because they don't apply to them and you know what? Now it's ruined it. It's just absolutely ruined. A few people have ruined it for everybody. But the solution in my eyes is to get rid of the cell phone all together at the table. They're not allowed uh, at the table. They're not allowed. I don't know about in the room, but um, they're not allowed at the table to be seen at all. Now, why is that hard for me to say? Because I'm not a person on my phone at poker tournaments. Maureen and Donna can both tell you because they both have been trying to get a hold of me at a poker table and I'm not looking at my phone. <clears throat> However, I do bring my phone out when I have a, a hand that I want to document that particular, you know, most importantly is probably pocket jacks or beat by pocket jacks for God's sakes because it's my journey of jacks. But the point is sometimes I want to take a picture right? And so then I want to bring my phone out and take a picture. And so that stunt rule is going to affect my social media capabilities, being able to update, you know, what I'm doing. Why? Because I may have a staker or my family just wants to know. My whole social media presence was born out of the fact I have family all over the United States and some are in different countries. And so my whole social media presence was born for a communication tool because people are texting me, how are you doing in the tournament? And I found it easier, <clears throat> pardon me, to just make a post, an update post and trying to answer individual uh, DMs when I finish a tournament or get a break. Why? Because I'm supposed to be focusing on my poker. And so it's really, it's even though it pains me to say it, I'm all about no phones whatsoever at the table at this point. And it's really because people just don't even go by the rules that are in place now. Some dealers enforce those rules. Some uh, dealers don't. So the players are like, well, I'm just going to try. And if he tells me to put it away, I will. If not, then I get away with it or whatever their mindset is. So anyway, anybody else have any more comments? ASG, what do you think about it? <clears throat> Uh, I think they should be more strict, I guess, in their enforcement of, you know, at the table while in a hand, but taking them completely out is just unrealistic, impossible, et cetera. Like you can't, we are now in a cell phone age where you can't just not allow them at the table, even when you're not in the hand. That's just not something that I think is feasible. I appreciate your opinion. And I, I bounce back to that old, Let's think, look at what's happening in the pit and every gambler that's ever been to a casino. And we all know that's a hundred percent of poker players. <laughs> They've all been to a casino. They may not play in the pits, but they certainly probably know, or at least 90% of them know that when you sit at a table at a pit, at a pit setting, there are absolutely no cell phone phones allowed. And guess what? Those players from the pits get up, walk away to use their cell phones and come right back. 
there's not a problem with that. But that's the point is they they walk away and come right back. You can't like if you miss a hand, it's critical in poker versus if you miss a hand of blackjack. Yeah, but you know what? There's nothing going on on your phone that's so important to miss a hand. My point exactly. My point exactly. Go ahead, John. I'm just going to say it's a risk versus reward. Like, is what's going on on your phone worth missing a hand or not? It's a choice you have to make. And when it comes to enforcement, I'm telling you, as somebody who has to deal with it, with people who want to be on their phones in a classroom and aren't supposed to be, it's way easier to just say, if I see a phone at all, I'm taking it versus, well, what are you doing on your phone? Well, because they'll always try to, to hide or deny what they're doing. So like as an enforcement way, it's just way easier that like, you know, phones are gone. If we see it, they're done. And if, oh, I agree. That's why it should be while you're in the hand, then you can't be on your phone. When you're not in the hand, you can be on your phone. Like that's clearly, I think, is the rule, should be the rule, et cetera. But like if you're on your phone, still at the table, then, you know, as long as you're off your phone by the time you get to your cards, that should be fine. Well, that's basically the rule that's in place now that's not working. Well, it's not working because it's not enforced. It should get be enforced harder. At you know, I was I've been in casinos where it is enforced. Well, more. and you know, it all depends on that dealer, and because it's not being uh, enforced unilaterally across the board, then we have to take a different approach. Because what's going on now is not working, obviously. So there has to be a different way. And we already talked about dealer abuse and I, and I would say that one of the fastest ways for a new dealer to get abused is try to tell somebody hey put your phone away or you can't have your cards i've seen that happen so many times that's like the number one like cause of dealer abuse when i'm out playing and why not take that pressure off the dealers as well so they can focus on dealing the cards and not babysitting a jackass that's on their c- cell phone I yes and know. i just want i just want to add it's I think it's twofold, right? So you can be on your cell phone, but then the other pictures that are popping up on Twitter is, okay, the rule is you can't use your cell phone during the hand. So once I'm out of a hand, can I pull up my GTO wizard on my cell phone and use it? Well, and part of that ruling ruling is that uh, the WSOP reserves the right to penalize you if you are using that GTO if they deem necessary, if you're using that GTO, even if it's between hands, there is a rule that states that. So they're taking, you know, they're looking at that going, whether it's during a hand or not, when it comes to GTO or solvers, I shouldn't just point that solver, but uh, solvers being used, they're also looking at it in between hands and you could get penalized for in between hands. So obviously they see that as a problem. And this discussion is brought to you by GTO Wizard, sponsored of World Series of Poker. <laughs> Which is a valid point, too, right? Like, how much are you willing to put the hammer down on um, solvers when one of them's a big sponsor? I mean, it's a, you know, nepotism, right? Uh, is it there? Isn't it there? I don't know. Like, is there a difference between going on GTO in between hands and then texting your friend your stack and then telling you? information that could be the same as GTO is exactly another point is why fo- all phones should be banned from the table all across the board <laughs> well they they could give you that like people do that all the time like if you go to the main event like in between hands you got people go into their corner right and but get all here, sorts of information. yeah but here's the thing right if you have to choose between sitting at the table and playing a hand or getting up and walking away so you could text your friend that information, you know, that's your choice. But guess what? That's your choice. You pay the penalties for that choice. You missed the hand. So, you know, choices. Yeah, I don't see any information, any difference between walking away from the table and getting information or being at the table and getting the information as long as your phone's away by the time the next card's are Point taken. Point taken. Anybody else have any more comments on that? Yeah, I've seen a tweet where, well, I've got a business and I need to be on my phone. Well, if you're running a business, mate, and you need to be on your phone, then you need staff to run it for you. Or maybe you should be at the poker table. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, 
Exactly. I mean, you get a break every two hours. So what is it stopping you from every two hours taking your phone out and texting people? People know that you are playing poker. If they want any updates, they should go to Poker News if you are, if you get hands on Poker News. And in those 15, 20 minutes, you can text them to your heart's content. Most people can remember the hands that they need to remember where they had bad beats. And I've always said, if you need to use a GTO solver, then you're not doing it properly. If you are studying GTO, you need your solvers in the brain. And what happened to people playing by actually looking for tells? Using the brains and actually thinking about what do I do in this situation? You don't need a flaming wizard to tell you this. It's only advising you. It's not 100% guaranteed that the GTO wizard will be right. Right, it's just what a, guide, a guidance. Yeah. What happened to instinct? I think a lot of people are relying on these solvers and GTO wizards, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they're not looking and they're not using the brain or their instincts that people used to rely on. They think the GTO wizard and solvers are the be all and end all, but what they don't realize is they are playing against recreational players, as I said earlier. They are playing against recreational players that might not know anything about GTO strategy. So it is what it is. Just play your game. You don't need your phone. Maureen, can you tell us, um, like, what are the policies like in Asia? When you played in Asia, like, do they have, are you allowed your phones? You're not allowed your phones? What are, what's the policies like in Asia? Um, I believe they were stricter. They were also stricter on acting out of turn, would serve penalties out quicker. And um, in general, I found when I played in Asia, like Taiwan and um, South Korea, that the players were very respectful. Um, they, they, they approached the game differently, um, in my opinion, than in the US, that you know, if you're at the table, um, you, you studied your, you, know, you um, practiced enough to be there, and, and the game is handled completely different, I would say. So they come in prepared. Yes. And so um, are cell phones out or not? Um, maybe just to look at a message quickly and then back in the pocket. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So ne never slowing down the game. No, no, not in my but experience. With the, but with the Asian culture, they are so reliant on selfies and pictures of everything that they do. I mean, you look, they post about I wanted to, to comment on what Donna was saying is I think that so many people misunderstand what solvers are actually for because she's right. It's all about using a solver as like a base guideline for if you have absolutely zero information. It's not like the play-by-play -play what to do. And so many people don't understand that. And that's why they're on their solver so much. Like you can study a lot and still have the same information but like it's kind of just I think that I think there's a severe misunderstanding in the poker world of what solvers actually are, are good for. And I agree with that to a certain point. But, you know, like the video I posted the other day, the guy's slowing down the game because he's got his cards. He's looking at the solver and then he's looking at his cards and then he's looking at the solver and then he folds. So he was also slowing down the game with that. Love oh, I that agree. he was quote unquote cheating by using it you know what i mean agree. So i agree with you on that i'm just saying like somebody like that who looks at the solver looks at their cards looks back at the solver like they just don't know what to do because exactly. they, they, they have a misunderstanding of what the solver is actually the information it's giving them it's not saying this play will work every time it's saying like in the absence of any other information this is your best play right 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 i hear you no i agree totally i hear you and totally agree uh, Maureen, how about in Switzerland, where you live? What about the phone policies there? 
Oh, um, so I would say across Europe, they're very strong um, with um, personal privacy. In some clubs, there's a no picture rule. Um, and if you take a picture, you need like the club owner's permission. Um, we also, in Europe, you're allowed to play under a nickname and have your results published most of the time under a nickname. The exception being when WSOP Europe comes to town, then you have to, you know, provide your real name. Um, so, so it's quite a different, um, you know, philosophy here. I would say I, I, I was just at Kings at the weekend, Kings Casino in Czech Republic. Um, many people are on their phone, I would say, not slowing down the game, mostly watching different um, sports on their phone um, and movies. Um, I haven't experienced it myself with people pulling out their solver at the table. I would say during the break, though, when we're away from the table, many people have their um, phones out with GTO Wizard and other solvers just um, checking some spots. Interesting. It's just interesting to hear different perspectives from around the world and how maybe some of them are handling it or their view about it. Um, so anybody else have any more questions or comments on that subject? Yeah, I've seen people play live and also play tournaments online on the phones, which is because they get bored. So like, right, right. especially on a Sunday. They're in a day two in a live tournament, and you know what Sunday is, the big grind. So, like, they're playing another tournament on the phone because they can. Right. Right. And I know, like, J.J. Lou, she'll watch a movie. Uh, I've seen people do books, you know, books on tape, so to speak, and listen to a book while they're playing. And believe me, I know there's lots of reasons, positive reasons, but unfortunately, those are ruining it for the, you know, the, the ones not going by the rules are ruining it for the ones that are. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, it happens every day in our lives. It's nothing unusual that the minority of some group, in this case, the minority of, you know, people trying to cheat the rules as far as phones is ruining it for the mass. And it's unfortunate. And it's going to be interesting to see how they can get around um you know, enforcing the rules once they put them in place, because we see today the rules, some rules are in place that are not being enforced. And it's, you know, it's snowballing into other issues. And it's unfortunate for those that try to do the right thing. Uh, Maureen, and go I ahead, ASG. Throw in with what Maureen was saying with the headsets, you know, last year there was, um, it really didn't gain much traction outside of spaces, I think. But uh, during the main event, Toby Lewis was wearing sunglasses that had the ability to uh, record, you know. Um, now, I'm not saying he was using them, but, like, the fact that that wasn't, like, something that's still, like, in the rule book is not against the rules. You know, that's an issue as well. Right. And some, uh, there were a couple of well-known pl uh, players that tweeted about it. But like you said, I think in the spaces, we talked about it more than anybody else. And we were all like, wait, why isn't this like a big deal right now? And I think it may have been because we had some players just behaving badly at poker tables. And that was taking the news feed um, priority over this topic last year. But I agree with you. There should have been more um, brought about that and said about that, discussed. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was just my feed, but I felt like the well-known players were saying how dare people accuse him of cheating, not yeah. like having an issue yeah. with it. And uh, it just goes to show you what some of them are, you know, they're right on board with uh, things that work against the rec player. You know, that's out and out cheating. If you're using a camera and then you have an ear plug in, an earphone in that, you can, you know, somebody's feeding you information, you're feeding them information and they're feeding you information. Hello, we're worried about solvers and you're going to allow that go on. Come on. Puzzle two. Puzzle part two. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Hold on, I'm trying to get Brian up here. Brian, I'm trying to get you up here, bud. I'm not sure what's going on. Um... Okay, 
it shows Donna as a co-host and everyone else as speakers. But when I try to bring Brian up as a co-host, it says I have two yeah, co-hosts. Yeah, you need to uninvite me. Oh, I guess I didn't realize I did that. I think I was thinking I was inviting Brian and I might have clicked on you. I don't know. Um, but here we are. Um, just a little update. Last night I had two hours of sleep. So I'm in worse shape today than I was yesterday. But anyway, it's okay. Um, baby JC. I, I think I'm slept here. For Am I here? Four straight hours. Um, can you hear me, Brian? Yeah, I can hear you. I just. Okay. Uh, it was weird. This phone, this has been one great morning. All right. Is everything What's okay? What's your excuse? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. Crazy, crazy morning. Crazy. <laughs> we can talk okay. about it later. Everything's fine. Okay. Well, I was just, I, I got a little worried and I was like, you know, he I, normally texts me or something. I, so I start to get concerned, but I'm, I'm glad everything is okay. And, uh, you know, we I were just appreciate that. absolutely waiting to hear from you and uh, put all those worries to rest. So we will talk about that <laughs> later. You doing okay now, though? Yeah, yeah, okay, good. I've, I've almost, I'm almost got the vlog finished, so that'll be out probably tomorrow. I think. Awesome. So that's good. Awesome. I want you and to Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. You got a sneak peek. At a very early rough cut cut of the well, intro. Well, let me tell you, if so. that was a rough cut, I can't wait to see the real thing because it was awesome and uh, I love it. Love it. I'm glad you took a little bit of my unsolicited advice. Um, but uh, oh, you, I, I appreciate it. Like you don't believe, you wouldn't believe, Sherry, for sure. I, I, very thankful for your help and everything. It's you great. are most welcome, bud. You know, I'm here to help people succeed. And uh, I, I'm happy to do whatever part I can to make that happen for people. So, um, you know what, we I'm going to backtrack for a minute. And uh, if anybody thinks about that subject to cell phones, um, anything they want to add, we'll go back to it, just bring it up again. But first, um, Brian, I want to give you a chance. Yesterday, I asked the question or asked, challenged people to bring the names of five females that you think are going to win bracelets or a bracelet, one of them winning a bracelet this summer. Do you have any thoughts on players? Well, I said Jamie Kerstetter yesterday. Yep. Um, Maria Ho. Um, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're in. You. Let's go. I love and, that. Uh, Marie. And, and somehow we're gonna get Donna out there too <laughs> to win the main event. Why do I feel and like Donna gonna... the first? <laughs> how, how awesome would that be, Donna, as main event champion and poker ambassador? <laughs> that would be amazing. I'm here for it. She'll have the best <laughs> rail ever. Are you going to buy go. me a airplane ticket, man? <laughs> Forget the airline Oof. ticket. You, she needs the, the damn staking, 10K staking. <laughs> yeah, we we got to come up with the stake. She's going to win her way in. What are you talking about? All right, satelliting. I like it. I like yeah. it. I'll have to read Dara's book quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, some did, of the wait, other did, things... wait, Donna, Donna, did you put it in, in Sean's contract or what? Oh, but I haven't finished the contract yet. So, so I'm oh, still okay. waiting for Sean. <laughs> He's got to hear the rest of the contract yet. I love that. <laughs> and then, then we'll see those signs. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm going to. You, you um... should seriously do that. I think you I think you should come up with a contract that we could read to him one night, Donna. I really do. <laughs> I really do. Besides the real one, but you know, we could just make a play on uh a spaces one or some some contract with poker involved. I don't know. Think about that. <laughs> we certainly okay. could invite him to a space and uh let you read to him the the terms and conditions, which would be hilarious. <laughs> okay. So think about that. Um, 
Okay, Brian, uh, anything you want to bring up or add to what we're doing today? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to finish up the vlog today. So as soon as that's done, want to get that out. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm really conflicted. I want to go out there and play Wednesday, Sherry, but um, the deep stack, I'm man, it, that's going to be a good event. But All right, Brian, um, I'm just going to have a heart to heart with you on your family's behalf. This is not the week, Fred. <laughs> All you have to do this today is, is Monday. Week. This is not the week, my friend. I'm trying to give you some advice, trying to talk you off the cliff. This is the I, week I'm of learning family. This. I'm, I'm learning this at 7.30 this morning. My wife says, you've got to be at the graduation walk for the elementary school that she went to. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. It was crazy so you grabbed your crazy. camera and you ran yeah that too <laughs> it's crazy so let me go back to this conversation about wednesday brian is not repeat after me brian is I not, not going not. to the wsop well, on well, wednesday <laughs> really the shootout is the problem right the shootout i could totally degen it's gonna be sherry that what single Brian table got to be over going. in four hours? <laughs> Brian is not going to the WSOP on Wednesday Capi? <laughs> or Capi? Friday. All right, <laughs> or Friday. You're gonna have to wait till Saturday. I, I'm morning. like heads up in the shootout. I'm just jamming every hand to try to get it over with to get home for the graduation. Now, does that really make yeah. sense to you? Come on, come on, yeah, dude. Probably not. Probably See, that's not. what I like about you guys. You know, most most poker friends, they'd be telling you, are you crazy? You're going to miss the shootout. You can totally make it to the graduation. You guys keep me responsible. So that's good. Well, because we know you're a family man and that family is important. So we're just making sure you stay on that path. I'm saying capisce, my hand's going as well in the Italian. So you know you didn't fight me. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna go ahead and read what's going on at the venetian and the win um we did all the others but i waited just out of respect for you but i'm just gonna go ahead and read it so i'm gonna let you off the hook so today thank at 11 you. I, I, go ahead i'm sorry sherry thank no, you you're though. good you're good bud you're good at 11 10 a.m the venetian has a 1600 dollars no limit uh, MSPT day 1A 750k guarantee day 2 and does that make sense oh yeah it's day 2 of that <laughs> day 1 wow they really wrote that so it's so confusing but anyway at 11 o'clock at the Venetian so get there folks um, the win has a no limit seniors day two event. It's a sixteen hundred dollar buy in at eleven. At eighteen hundred hours, they have a no limit turbo eleven hundred dollar buy in twenty five k starting stack hundred thousand dollar guarantee. So that's where we're at with that. Anybody want to Brian? Do you have any comments of or thoughts about what you think the policy should be as far as cell phones? We've been covering that for probably the last twenty minutes or so. What yeah, do you think the I, policy should be? I, I think that um, I think that if you're in a hand and you're using your phone, you you should have a dead hand, unless there's no more action pending. Then, then I'm fine with you videoing your bust out hand or whatever you want to do. Um, the the other thing too is like. Um, you know, usually, like, I film, and you'll see in the vlog, I'll, I'll film, like, the, the dealer shuffling, and, you know, really, I'm filming my chips with that stuff blurred out, because I don't want to accidentally see a card or something like that, not that I'm even really looking at the screen, um, but, um, you know, I, th I think that I don't think that we have to ban cell phones altogether, but I think some 
some I'm going to sound like I'm talking about gun legislation, some common sense cell phone, uh, you know, le legislation just uh, it just makes sense. You know, like if you're using it, we, we're not going to come over like the other guy. I was just checking my my GTO wizard uh, the subscription. subscription to see if it was still active. Give me a break. You know, Wait, you and you're sitting there story? with like a privacy screen on your thing i did see the one this morning that said you know ipads only that might be an okay thing like um but um yeah i i don't uh yeah but I you can bring general, up a, you can bring up a solver on an ipad there's no difference yeah but but every a little a little more difficult to conceal and you know if you're going to do that then you're taking a risk and if if there's if there's action pending, then your hand's just dead. I mean, like, don't be using your phone during a hand. You know, I hear you, like, and I appreciate those. Like, comments. think about it for 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 me for me, Sherry. It's it's kind of automatic, right? Once I've looked at my cards, I'm not picking up my phone for anything. Right. So, but you know, like, there's always people pushing. Pretty the simple. I agree, but there's always people pushing the rules. That's why we're having this conversation today. People are not following the rules well, that are already in place. Damn it! Yeah, and 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 so just make the rule like the rule have some teeth. Like you know, obviously, if you have GTO, by the way, if you have any kind of solver app open, you that's just a ban. That's not even like a question in my mind. You're just banned. Like, I don't care what you were doing in there. Don't don't open it anywhere in the poker room. And if I have conclusive evidence that it was open, then then it's a problem, you know? Well, and I appreciate so, your thoughts. I also on thought that. about the idea maybe maybe they could say, you know, don't have it on your phone. If you know, we can ask to see your phone at any time and if you have if you have that app on there. Or, you know, we look in your history and we see that during the tournament you were using it, you know. Right. So. I'm going to read And if you don't want to show us your phone, then you're, we just assume that you're cheating anyway and you're banned. So. Well, I appreciate those comments. And I'm going to read. Somebody sent me a DM. And because it's in a DM, I'm not going to mention who did. Uh, because I feel like they went private for a reason. I don't know either way. So, but their comment is, my belief is a poker tournament should be like taking a test in school. And I'm going to say for John's on John's behalf, because he's a teacher, it's not from John. You can study notes, the internet, um, you can study notes, the internet and charts before you walk into an examination room. But once you get in there sure. or to the poker table, those items are not allowed to be viewed. So that's another great point of view. So uh, John's coming up. I mean, we've got enough problems. Like here, I, here's a, a a hand that came up early in the event. Okay, uh, in the five hundred dollar. So so um, they're on the turn, and there's three diamonds on the board. Okay. Right. And and the, the, the river comes out and the guy says, I didn't go. And the dealer the dealer says, No way, she was adamant. You I saw you check, right? Which you and I both know that most dealers, and this wasn't somebody that was brand new, um, most dealers are hesitant to you know, they, they don't jump out there and go, You didn't check like I, I i i i've i've heard a lot of times they say you know what i don't i don't know or whatever but this lady she was adamant and then the guy the floor comes over and the guy's describing what he did and he, he's taking his fingers and pointing at his ch chips like he's counting he's like i was just doing this you know and he's pointing and he actually like pointed down and and his finger moved down i'm like well that's a check you know right anyway the hand the hand ends he misses his nut flush and turns over his cards and i'm like 
yeah, this guy wanted another try at the river, you know? So, like, we have stuff like that that's, that goes on. And, um, you know, the, the, the solver thing is just one of many things that needs to be dealt with appropriately. Um, you know, you, you don't get to do two, two draws at the river. I mean, honestly, like, when that hand gets turned over... I don't, I don't know. Like as a, as a floor person, I, I'm probably issuing, I don't know. I, I don't, what, did, what should you do there? Sh I'm going to tell you what. Everybody thought I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to let Maureen answer that, answer your question. Maureen, what do you think they should have done there? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit rusty on the TDA, but um, that's a very complicated situation. At least the TDA came over. But if the, player really honestly didn't have a chance to act, then I believe they need to reshuffle that river card into the deck and bring a new one. Well, they're going to do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Oh. But the, the, the debate is right. That the guy waits and here, here's what the floor said. The floor said, well, he protected his action. I said, no, he didn't. He waited until the river was out before he said anything. Right. When he saw he didn't like the river, now he's going to say, I didn't go. And you got a dealer here that's saying, no, 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 you checked. You know, like, you checked. Like, I'm sorry. I'm going to buy the dealer there. Like, I, I didn't like it. But especially the way he's describing it, he's anywhere from inadvertent to total scumbag. Right. But but I, I can say that. But, but um, and I can even give him the benefit of the doubt. But here, here was my question afterwards that I came to, Maureen. Do you think if he had made his flush, he would have caused a stir? And if the answer is no, then, then, you know, then, 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 then we have the answer, right? Like, yes, exactly. You know. And that's why I also tell players, you know, if something's brewing at the table, um, I'm the first one to tell the dealer, can we get a floor over here or, you know, something like that. Um, right. Especially if you feel like the player, um, has some ill intent in mind that he's not being so honest, but without being there. Yeah. It's hard for me to comment, but yeah. Um, very crappy situation indeed. The other interesting one that we had was, um, and this is kind of happens a lot. Um, we were at, um, hundred, 200. And on the turn, the person put, a 5,000 chip out and said five. <laughs> and so um, the, the right ruling, and I think they got it right, is that it's really kind of relative to the pot is how they kind of figure out what the intent was. So the pot was like a thousand, you know, they're not making them put 5,000 into, right. into a thousand chip pot. Um, but obviously there too, right? Like, you know, it's a 2,500 or a 3,000 chip pot. Where do you find yourself there? Putting in 5,000. Maybe closer to <laughs> being 5,000. Yeah. So that is one thing, like, you know, I would recommend, especially for people that play a lot online, is practice doing the same thing. Not only is it good for you to not be doing different things because your, your hand might be different, but also you avoid things like that. You know, well, and make sure, the full amount exactly. Make sure you're clear 500, 5,000, 5 million, you know, say the bet, say that, you right. know, use your words, people. Right. Otherwise it could cost you and can be detrimental I mean, to that hand. I mean, I, I, Obviously, if you're pushing a stack of chips forward, then everybody knows what, what it is. But if you're only putting one chip out there, make sure that you're for sure saying it. And it's not a bad idea to do it. Just do it the same way every time, you know, like I Great said. Great so advice. One chip or 50 chips. Great advice. I want to give them. Just do the same thing. Unless you're playing, it, it, Sherry, unless you're playing against me. Then make sure that only with your good hands that you do certain things <laughs> and with your crappy hands, 
you do different things. <laughs> I hear you, bud. Listen, I want to give a little shout out. I see Kathy Chang has joined us in the goo today and tomorrow we look forward to interviewing her our show starts at nine but she's going to join us at uh 9 30 for that interview of course she's welcome to come in at nine but uh i thought we can get rid of the business of the day first and then we will enjoy her company on our panel for an interview kathy is a crusher in mixed games so bring all mixed game questions tomorrow folks all right, Maureen, you had an assignment. Do you have any other things you wanted to bring up today? <laughs> um, yeah, no, no one else seems to be bringing it up, but um, I tagged you in a tweet because I see Tony Burns and Chris Moneymaker there have a special T-shirt. So I don't know if you already talked about it on the show. We did not because once I figured you were coming out, and coming on to join us, I thought, okay, this would be fun to, to discuss. Why don't you give a little bit of background about what you're referring to? Um, so there were some pictures at the WSOP. Um, the Chris Moneymaker Tour has a new T-shirt. It's like a Freddy Krueger-like-esque um, motif on it, but with Jeff Platt's face. Um, because as we know from Poker Twitter, that... Um, many people blame Jeff for their downfall and bad luck in tournaments. Because the, the rumor is, or the myth is, that if, oh, you get interviewed, if you get interviewed by Jeff, you will go out of the tournament shortly. So they're doing like an anti-Jeff interview kind of uh, motif or... or uh... yeah. Go ahead. This is really interesting. I forgot to thank Jeff because he, he stopped by to see Daniel on Thursday, not too long before, you know, Daniel hit the rim. Daniel had a lot of chips. Too. Oh, you're just putting the curse. You're just putting it together that uh, Jeff Platt. That's so funny. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to send him a. Thank you. I should send him flowers. You might need to or buy him lunch when you're at the WSOP next week because you're not going this week. Just an FYI. Maureen, did you want to add anything else to that? No, I mean, I do feel bad for Jeff, um, but he has been in on a couple of um, satire clips on the same subject. But also, you know, I think players themselves also um refer to the poker news curse right that if you're chip leading or have a big stack and poker news lists you in the chip count tweets about you and then all of a sudden that's also your downfall so i think there's a lot of superstitions out there um but i just wanted to bring this up because i thought it was a little bit funny with the t-shirts um yeah i'm gonna tell you one curse i believe in donna or Maureen, I didn't even know about that one. Maybe that's the problem. I keep seeking them out now that you mention it. Oh, see, Brian's getting an education today. I need to hide. I love it. Wow. Now, one thing I will say that I, I kind of am starting to believe in is anytime I try to do an update, like so my kids can see it, it's like the it's like the kiss of death for me. Not that I necessarily go out of the tournament, but I start losing some hands. I'm like, damn it! Why did I have to post my chip stack size for my kids right now, or or text them uh, a picture of it or whatever as an update? So I really don't do that very often anymore. My my advice would be, in all seriousness, try to ignore. It that kind of stuff as much as you can but listen i'm still not talking about bracelets while we're at a final table about the bracelet no <laughs> or that i got it locked down or anything like that <laughs> that one i'm holding on listen to. his brother so if you come to my room his brother what did your brother do to you the other day when you were still in it to win it he's like what what time is the final table <laughs> I'm like, you did not just ask that question. The curse. <laughs> so as much the as curse. Like, Don't be superstitious, guys. It's just, it's just uh, whatever. Well, listen, the one thing I do want to cover that I haven't yet today is 
some inductees to the Hall of Fame through our hi- look at history. So between the years of 1994 and 1995, there were no un- inductees. And I actually reached out to a friend of mine who's been in the poker world and and would know the information as to why not. And he really didn't have an answer. So I, I think I might still ask some questions about that today because I am what? curious. What, what years did you say, Sherry? 94 and 95, but there's some others as well as I go on here. Uh, in 1996, so, I'll go ahead. Yeah. Um, at some point, Binion's almost closed, but I think it might have been later than that. Oh, that was too. So actually, there you should go back and look, Sherry. There's a really good article on that, by the way. I know this is a side topic, but on uh, there's a story that I think Poker News did about when Binion's almost missed the 2003 World Series of Poker. I think it was 2003, and just it's just such an interesting story. Like six weeks before the tournament, like Caesars takes over. And, uh, okay, so this is this what we're gonna, dash to even open. So this is what we're going to do. Brian's going to look that article up for tomorrow and bring it to us and put it in our chat so we could discuss yeah, I it. I give myself homework. Yes, you do. Okay, because... that sounds good. All right, so let me move on that with this. Good. And I'll, I'll go through it. In 1996, Julius Oral, otherwise known as Little Man Popwell, was inducted to the Hall of Fame. Julius gained his nickname from his billiards pow- prowess as a boy, he regularly beat men over twice his age. After the war, little man operated lotteries, craps, tables, and card games in his home, and he, and he was raided many times. Eventually, he was convicted of tax evasion and incurred a 400,000 um in, uh, he incurred 400,000 in penalties. In 1997, Roger Moore uh was inducted. A fun fact about Roger is he owned a golf course in Georgia. In 1998 through 2001, there were no inductees. Again, I'm going to try to figure out why today. In 2001, uh, I'm sorry, between 98 and 2000, in 2001, they inducted Stu the Kid Unger. He was known as the best gin rummy player in the world. He started an underground gin rummy game while he was a youngster still in school. Stu became the youngest WSOP champion of the time, and today that title is now held by Jokata. Stu almost didn't get a chance to defend his title because leading up to the event, he had a heated exchange with a dealer and spit in their face. So that was a big controversy leading into um, the uh, fa- the year he would have defended his WSOP title. Um, any comments about those folks? I think he almost didn't make it to the tournament too, and and be- because he was probably partying or yes. something. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and who bought him in? Somebody bought Wasn't him Wasn't it in. Mike Sexton? I want to s- well I known. think it was Mike Sexton. Probably Mike yeah, Sexton. I think it was Mike Sexton. And he almost didn't make it to the first break or something crazy. Disappeared for a while and then came back and he won the tournament, right? And he yes, he did. The second year. Yeah, he did. And, 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 you know, not too, not too long stories. after we lost to and, and I'm going to tell you, it is, it's the dark side of the poker world or gambling world, right? That people fall to addiction and, you know, there's other things, that, other jobs in life that the same thing happens. And, you know, it's just such a sad state he left behind his daughter and his wife and um, God bless him and God rest his soul. Uh, a great gin rummy player, a better poker player. Um, and a character. Just, I love watching the old clips with him. I wish there were more of those clips because um, he just fascinates well, me. I think it's important that, you know, I'm, I'm always, Sherry, you know, wanting to talk about the poker lifestyle and the fact that, you know, 
who what people should really think about and and what Brian, you're cutting out. You're in the matrix, they want bud. Out of their life. I'm sorry. Um, let me. That's okay. You went into the matrix, so we missed a few words in there, bud. Is this any better? Can you yes, hear me better? So far, so good. Yep. Go ahead, bud. Okay. Um, people shouldn't. You know, I don't. I don't ever want a candy coat what what the poker lifestyle is like for a lot of people and if you're somebody that has problems with addiction in other areas you really should think twice about getting heavily into uh, we poker lost you, as a quote unquote career there are people that oh, I guess it's phone sorry am i back and Brian, we are yep. losing you, and your message is so important uh, um, that I yeah. really want to make sure that it's coming across. Go ahead and try it again, bud. Okay, if not, I'm going to be in a better area in a few moments. But um, it, it, it's very important that you consider, if you're thinking about being a pro, not only doing the things that you need to do to be a pro and not bullshitting yourself. Right. You know, if if you're sitting there on your last dime in a hundred dollar buy-in game, even a fifty dollar buy-in game, you know, you are not in the right universe. You know, go go to work, earn some money that you can set aside for your bankroll. And when I say go to work, I mean like a real job that they're gonna give you a you know you're gonna get a check. And then and then do proper bankroll management and do all those things. But Sherry, this is the other side of it. If you're somebody that struggles with addiction as it is, this is not the thing that you should be adding to your list of, of, of problems in life. Um, it poker. That's why for me, poker is very much for entertainment. Yeah. I'm serious. I want to win. I want to win a bracelet badly but last year i sat at home because i didn't have the money yeah i wanted to be there i very much wanted to be there i saw all the tweets that we sherry and i were doing the show i i played one event i played the tag team event and mostly that's because um i didn't have the money i didn't have the money to play and if i don't have the money i'm not playing i'm not gonna borrow the money i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna um I'm not going to put myself in that situation. So I'm going to tell you a little know, story. There's a lot of people. I'm like going to tell you a little story. Um, part of why I started selling peaches was to pay for my poker. And there have been two years and last year was one of them that I didn't sell one peach during the summer because the peach crops were frozen out and we didn't have any peaches to sell. And I can tell you right. that I made a commitment that I would never take poker money out of my family budget. Like if I wanted to play poker, I had to earn, a, you know, I've dealt home games before to earn money. You know, I've done other side things to earn money for my poker bankroll. And I always made that commitment that I was not going to take funds out of my household funds for poker. Right. And a right. few years ago, um, people that know me know when I go to the WSOP, I'm probably playing three or four tournaments. Like one year, I think I had 16 tournaments picked, but it was the year my mom died and we had not buried her yet. She died a few months before. And by the and then my daughter got married uh, right before the WSOP. So by the time I got to the SOP, I was just exhausted and slept most of my 10 day visit. I think I ended up playing two or three tournaments out of 16 I had planned to play. And, but my, um, I wanted to say that I usually have two or three that I have picked out of what I would call a bigger buy in a thousand dollars, $500, whatever. 
and then I like to play the nightlies or a s- smaller turns. That's my budget. Why? Because I'd rather take a thousand and play two or three tournaments than just one thousand dollars for one tournament. And one right. year I was going to be in Vegas. I don't remember how long, two or three weeks, and it was a long stint. So I really needed to spread my my funds out for the whole time I was there. And I had a very dear friend come up to me the night before the ladies uh, event and asked me if I was going to play the $1,000 buy-in ladies event the next day. And I said, no, you know, it's not in my budget. I had a staking uh, package going that year with just five people, my kids, and then two other people that just are big supporters of mine. And it was just a small staking package. And I had these small tournaments that I was going to play, you know, staying within my budget. And this dear friend said to me, no, I'm going to stake you into the ladies tournament. And, you know, I just looked at her and said, look, that's a lot of money. I just don't know if I can agree to that. Like it made me so uncomfortable because it was her hard work earned money. And she was, you know, thankful for our friendship and things we've done together, you know, she had her reasons and I appreciated those reasons so much, but it was very uncomfortable for me to even have that conversation. And I know she probably thought I was nuts when I was like, I can't let you do that. No, we're not doing this. And then I said to her, right. but let me talk, let me think about it. And I'll let you know in about an hour. And I actually called a little powwow. I don't know if I ever, I don't know if I ever made this public, but I called a little powwow with my kids were all in town with their significant others. And I, I sent a a group text message out and I said, meet me at Harris um, uh, food court in 15 minutes. And of course everybody descended and I, I told them what was going on. And I think it was Natalie or Nick. I think it was Natalie looked at me and said, what seems to be the problem? Why aren't you saying yes to this? And the other kids were like, yeah, what's the, why did you have to have? And I was like, it's just uncomfortable for me to take someone else's hard work earned money. Right. And so I did agree to, and come up with a plan that we would go 50, 50 on that tournament. And I would reallocate money I had for other tournaments in that package uh, through that conversation with my kids to, you know, this ladies tournament. And I'm going to tell you something. Not only was I so touched by the offer, but I was so excited when I cashed. Yeah, for sure. um, That tournament. Yeah. Because it was a tournament I had not planned to play. And someone had faith in me and put their faith in me through their dollar. And it was nothing made me happier than to hand over, you know, our winnings from that tournament. I came in 91st That's cool. out of like 968 players or whatever the hell it was. And in, in yeah. the top 10 percent. And let me tell you, that's a memory I'll never forget. So I thank that angel. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely that's not awesome. for like that's something that you're not would say. I, I know that. I know that. Oh, Brian, Put you're cut now, brother. Here. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Is that any better? Yes. I I had somebody want to put me in the main one year, and uh, I said, uh, I don't know. I ultimately didn't do it, but I just, I I can feel that pressure, you know? That's why I didn't didn't do it, you know? You know, I'm going to tell you, I had somebody, I was truly just a rec player until I had somebody approach me, a good friend of mine, approach me and and offer me a main event seat. And I'm going to tell you what I told him. This was like February of that year. And I said to him, no, thank you. Know, my, my son, Nick, and my son, Ed were with me. And this guy drove like eight hours to come talk to me face to face. He wouldn't even do it on the phone. He drove like eight hours from Biloxi to Harris, North Carolina, Cherokee. And he said, I just wanted to have this conversation face to face. It's like three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, dude, what is going on? 
and he offered me a 10K seat into the main event that summer. And I looked wow. right, and I looked right at him and I said, no, thank you. I can't take that from you. And my sons are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I said to all three of them, I can't take it because I'm not ready. Like, I don't think my poker game is tuned enough to invest in a $10,000 seat, let alone someone else's money. I, and so then I said to him, but from this day forward, I will study and I will work on my game. And when I'm ready, if you're willing, I will take you up on that offer. And he said, bet. And I still have not taken him up on that offer. But like this year, I thought maybe the year, but I'm too busy in real life right now to even consider playing the main event um, because it's just, I think I need to put more into it. I don't mind playing the smaller events because I'm definitely ready for those. But the main event is a different beast and I would not play it this year. Next year for definite, because as I say, you've got a lot going on. Your head's not in the right spaces. And I think it's something for you to plan and look forward to next year so that everything's going to be behind you. The baby's going to be worn and like there's going to be a lot more for you. And hopefully you'll have a lot less on your plate because right now you're Gigi and the baby's only little and she needs taking care of. Yeah, we've had a, a lot of issues with baby and mommy the last three days, and it's it's been rough, but we're making it through. And, uh, you know, and maybe I will play the main event next year. We're going to just take it one month at a time. Um, but I just wanted to share something, you know, some of those things with you folks, because, you know, yeah. you have to know your limitations and you have to keep it in perspective. Like Brian was saying, if you have an addictive personality, you know it, you're the num you know yourself. And so, you know, have those things in place that safeguard your everyday living expenses, safeguard your relationships. You know, it, it does take a lot of extra, so to speak, brain power to keep those things going, but they're for your own safety and your own good for the future, right? And, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help from the community. There's lots of people that would be willing to help, you know, um, help you stay on the right path, give you support, whatever it is. So I'm off my soapbox. Thank you. Well, and I, I think that, I think that there, my biggest thing, Sherry, is that there's an unrealistic um, story that's being told to people. And, you know, they, they think, you know, that people are out there, like everybody's profitable and that kind of thing. Um, it's not all um, it's not all roses and sunshine, right? And unfortunately, in, in yeah. social media, um, we want we're promoting the positives, right? Because we want to stay focused on the positives. But like anything else in life, there's also downsides, right? And we all need to be aware and conscious of those downsides, and hopefully help anybody that's you know struggling. And I'm going to change the subject right now and move us along. So I'm going to ask um, the panel if anybody else has any questions or comments before we shut it down. So I'm going to start with Maureen. No, I think that's really good points. Um, I know, especially with the series, sometimes, you know, peer pressure kicks in as well. And it's like, you know, why aren't you playing the Millie? Why aren't you playing the monster? Um, and that's the advice that I also give to, you know, um, players who come to me looking for advice, you know, stick with your plan, stick to the tournaments you're good at and um, don't feel like you have to right. play the event because everyone's going to play it. Because in the reality, yes, I know it's WSOP. Yes, I know it's a bracelet. I know it's once a year, but there's like tournaments everywhere, every weekend throughout the world. So, yeah, if you're not feeling it, don't have the bankroll, then just, you know, take a deep breath and try again in a couple of weeks, months, years. Amen. Because tournaments are a dime a dozen and so is the cash game. Donna, any last remarks? Yeah, just play within your budget, please. Don't get peer pressure. 
and remember to take a break. Take a break from gambling. Take down time because it takes it out of you. Thank you so much, Sherry, for hosting this yet again. Much appreciated, much appreciated, Maureen. And of, of course, Software Brian. Thanks to Todd, Brad, Barry, Jeff, ASG, Scott, and everybody else who's tuned in. So thank you for that. Thank you, Don. I appreciate you. Yeah. Software, go ahead, bud. Yeah, thank you, my friends. Appreciate all you guys. Uh, look forward to... Uh, I'm definitely going to wait till after our show tomorrow to release the vlog. Um, so look for that and uh, excited for uh, the rest of the series. Can't wait. I can't wait for Brian's first vlog. If it's anything like what he's been doing on Twitch, it's going to be lots of fun. And there was an, I did put an update on the fantasy poker league on my Twitter account. So everybody can see what the standings were as of like three o'clock this morning. ASG, thank you for the help. As always, we appreciate all of you listeners and my co-hosts this morning. I appreciate all of you. Much love. Good luck on the felt today. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.